But hey, I can tell this finna get bad. <laughs> I can already tell this is finna get bad, bro. Is this real? This can't be real, bro. What the hell happened? A complete fraud, which we already knew. But apparently, faking uh, taking uh, various hormones. Yesterday, a video hit the internet to their 10 million young fans, uh, essentially teaching them how to, uh, you know, inject things, which uh, is... A curious thing for an adult to do. I think, you know, if you want to live your best life, that's okay. I think giving tutorials to, you know, a young audience on how to do these type of things, that feels very nefarious. It feels uh, extremely wrong. Uh, this individual is obviously not a doctor. Um, their viewers, you know, we already know that there are many cases where these influencers are telling their various viewers to you know go get stuffs you know how to get these items off the black market the whole thing is messed up on top of dylan admitting that the song itself was also fake and garbage so i'm going to start with the the softer side of it before we get to the darker side of it dylan mulvaney admits their song which of course uh, you know, we already knew. Dylan Mulvaney admits Days of Girl Girlhood is the most annoying song in the history of ever. And its dumb lyrics may present young women as ditzy, neur 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 neurotic shopaholics. I kept wanting to say nerdrotic. You know, everyone knows my employee, Gary of Nerdrotic, recently passed a million subscribers. Huge shout out. I consistently am impressed by my employees' hard work. Dylan Mulvaney has addressed concerns about the Days of Girlhood song, admitting that the lyrics are dumb, annoying, and unflattering to teenagers and young women. Well, everyone knew that. The lyrics of the song were essentially that women are dumb, that they are ditzy, that they need retail therapy, that they need to take pills to get through the day and of zero substance. Now, are there, you know, are there numerous songs that you could say the exact same thing about? Yes. I mean, if you look at, uh, you know, for example, uh, WAP, you know, you look at any modern rap song of that nature or anything, they're, they're basically also, you know, you know, treating women like trash you know, saying it's somehow empowering to be a whore, you know, all this kind of stuff, which it isn't, and it leads to a terrible life of unhappiness and unfulfilledness. So there's plenty of terrible songs, of course. But Dylan now said that they didn't mean to ridicule women. What do you mean you didn't mean to ridicule women? That, that leads me to believe that Dylan did not write this song. Dylan did not write this song. Dylan did not, you know, choreograph the dance. Dylan did not... Um, write the music. It was just propaganda. The lyrics themselves were basically misogynistic. They were basically, you know, um, uh, um, how a man views women. People say, is Dylan Mulvaney's 15 minutes of fame over? I don't know. I'm going to say yes. 95% of people agree. Now, there are many people out there who say they've never seen Ben Shapiro and Dylan Mulvaney in the same room at the same time. And I got to say, Neither have I. Quote, the fact that both conservatives and liberals would probably agree that this is potentially the most annoying song in history of ever was no small task, Dylan Mulvaney said in a TikTok post this week. Mulvaney acknowledged that the three-minute pop song was packed with dumb lyrics, but said it made this fun and reminiscent of Cyndi Lauper's 1983 Girls Just Want to Have Fun. Uh, no, it didn't. Cindy Lauper's Girls Just Want to have, a fun, have Fun is a classic that will stand the test of time. People still love it 40 years later. Quote, I don't think womanhood or girlhood is chalked up to these like silly, frivolous things, Dylan said. 
I still think we should be allowed to enjoy those things. And I could have probably written a song about my pain or my trauma, but I didn't want to. Still, Dylan acknowledged that it was many listeners, a really bad song. That was part of uh, her bad music taste, they added. I mean, if you look at this song, by the way, the comments have been turned off. As predicted, it has nearly a million views, which is mostly people coming to dunk on it. It has 11,000 upvotes, okay, which is good. I mean, if you're watching this video right now, I'm going to ask everybody, if you're this far in the video, if you haven't left a like on it, leave a like on it. I have to be able to get more likes than a terrible Dylan Mulvaney song. We can do this. It also has... 110,000 dislikes. And no, I'm not going to play it, and I'm not going to subject you to watching it. That alone should be worth a like, perhaps even a share. But now things kind of have taken a little bit of a darker turn. Here is a video who, uh, which was originally uploaded by them um, and, by, and then reposted by Libra Akrat. Lib Libra Akrat, I don't know. Probably worth a follow. I just followed them. Dylan teaches 10 million TikTok fans, many of them young teens, how to inject hormones and become trans. Why is TikTok promoting this to children? Well, I would say, I would say that you know this. You see the original post. For those of you who've wondered why people on the right aren't fans of Dylan, this is the exact reason why. You know, a lot of people might accurately point out to me. Jeremy, you cover this person more than anyone. You're giving them more clout. That is a fair criticism. But also understand that there are a lot of people out there that don't know that hidden deep among terrible pop songs and, the, and playing woman face and all this kind of stuff is a deeper, darker side of this. Dylan's primary, uh, primary 10 million plus audience on TikTok is a mix of children, some as young as 10, preteens and teens. And this is the type of content that Dylan is creating and pushing, thereby exposing their young, impressionable, and innocent minds to gender ideology and transgenderism. And when people wonder the question of just how exactly did 25% of Gen Z end up identifying as a member of LGBTQ+, here is your answer. 100% right. 100% right. I can't play the music because, of course, it's, you know, copywritten. It says, Tuesdays are when I take my hormone injection. So, showing it. Oh, I forgot to do the, 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 by the way, the one flick to see if there's any air bubbles in there. Um, also, I didn't see them clear. Usually you do a little push to make sure it, it clears it out, but they didn't do that. And then conveniently it's being done off camera. Okay. This is where people's people are questioning it. Okay. I get a little scared when I do it because I hate needles, but it ultimately makes me happy. Isn't it curious that they didn't show them doing it? My face is swollen from beard electrolysis yesterday. I hid out at home for a few days until it looks better. Okay. My version of womanhood to also, to be fair, there is only one version, right? Biology. Okay. My version of womanhood looks really different than most. I don't share a good majority of it on here. Yes, you do. You share all of it. Also no alcohol wipe. Just wait. There's more stuff. Um, I don't share a good majority, but I never want my existence to make someone else feel small. All women you do. I hope one day there will be enough room and joy from pain for all of us. Now, I thought it was curious. I thought this whole thing was this. Nobody's talking about this. Nobody's talking about this. Here's what some of my staff over at thepublica.com were saying. Um, so, by the way, you can always check out the publica. I assume they'll be covering this. We can't, they can't yet prove it, but they do not believe that Dylan is actually injecting themselves. 
first, that's the wrong location to inject on yourself. Second, they're almost certain that he's using a filter needle. Those are syringes not for injection. They aren't even sharp enough. They're also known as blunt fill needles. I'm not an expert. This is just some of the conversation going on. Also, they take estrogen pills. Testosterone is the injectable one. There could be exceptions, but the pills, this, I don't know what this is, but none of it makes sense. Also, people think that it's a fake chest. I think they're, they're, they think Dylan's wearing a, a fake knockers. Many people said, you know, I've never thought that Dylan was actually on hormones. I think they've done a lot of surgery and maybe has some sort of eating disorder, but the voice really has not changed very much. If you listen to the voice from before transitioning and they don't display any normal appearance of man who would be on hormones. Isn't that interesting? I think the whole thing just might be fake. And by the way, the plastic surgery that was done wasn't even that much. Could probably just go right back. So I don't know what you think, but I think it's convenient that the that you didn't see the, any of the injection. Also, again, many of these... Now, I'm saying you can't inject estrogen, but because it's available on pill form, and he's afraid of needle, and Dylan's afraid of needles, then why wouldn't... Why wouldn't... Why wouldn't Dylan just take the pills? Very, very, very curious. Very, very, very disturbing. Who's paying for it all? That's the question. Let me know what you think.